Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, once again, we just pause, Lord, to thank You for all Your many blessings. Lord, we thank You for the goodness of this life. We thank You, Lord, that You've made a, a provision for us to be able to work and uh, do the things necessary, but then also, Lord, that we might have leisure time. You uh, established that back in the Garden of Eden, and I pray today, Lord, that all of us take the time today to just relax, to not worry about jobs and not worry about things that we have to get done, but to be able to relax and just spend this time worshiping and praising You. And, and resting in your peace. We invite you into this worship service today, Lord, and ask that everything that is said and done here today will in some way glorify the wondrous name of Jesus Christ. In his name we say this. Amen. Amen. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Just a uh, real quick announcement. Um, where is Norma Jones? All right, Norma, yell out. Tell us what we need to know about the Mother's Day tea. All right, thank you. Sign up sheet in the back of the sanctuary. Before you leave, make sure you That's sign me. up that you're coming and then also that uh, whatever you can bring. Uh, at this time, uh, oh yeah, uh, Keith's back with us. Great to have you back with us, Keith. So make sure you take a moment or two to talk to Keith and uh, he'll. I, I'm guessing he'll be heading back to work down south in a while. So Today? All right, make sure you talk to Keith before he leaves today and... Um, Tell him how good it is to see him. He's looking good, isn't he? Yeah. Looks great from the last time we saw him. So, all right. Uh, I'll ask if Dusty will come at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, how may Israel say, "If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us"? We have promised, Lord, that you will always be with us. You will defend and protect your people. Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. When, when trouble comes upon us without warning, we can turn to you with our trust. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. When, when we are in danger of drowning because of our troubles, you, you will rescue us. us. Then the proud waters had gone over our souls. The troubles of this life can overwhelm us, yet we will trust in you, Lord. Blessed be the Lord, who has not given us a prey to their teeth. Even when we are in danger of being devoured by our enemies, you will protect us and keep us safe. The soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trappers. The snare is broken, and we are escaped. Whatever threatens to ensnare us, you will destroy their tracks and deliver us. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We will rejoice in all things, knowing that you, Lord, will help us and keep us safe. Amen. Amen. You are my king.
Let's shout out this next song. Shout to the Lord. Brother Ken and Brother Gary will come forward at this time. <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Brother Ken, would you ask our offertory prayer this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, we're very thankful for our beautiful gift. Be with each and every one of us without hearing today. Continue to be with us and continue to love us. Keep us from all evil. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
able to on this last song, would you please stand with us? When lost are saved and they find their way at the sound of His great name. Lost are saved, find their way. Besides getting this morning's service ready, picking the songs, and 
am getting the uh, message ready for today, uh, getting Wednesday night's Bible study ready. I, excuse me, also had a funeral that I officiated on Wednesday, and I had to um, teach a uh, class Wednesday night, of course, so I had to prepare for that. I had a baby dedication that was supposed to happen tomorrow. I got all dressed up, got here, waited for two hours, and they never showed. I had written uh, a uh, program. I couldn't uh, find a baby dedication service, so I wrote one and uh, didn't get to use it yesterday. So um, that kind of took my time up this week. And then to boot, Thursday, Vicki and I went up to our cabin and worked on the plumbing all day. All this on top of the other responsibilities that I have, um, it began to tire me out. I was just plain uh, exhausted uh, leading up until this morning. The Lord has given me some energy. I praise Him for that. But it'd be nice to have a, a robot double <laughs> that you could send it and do some of the jobs for you. But if I did that, I'd be even more dependent on electronics. Our technologies today are just amazing, but there are, are so many things, um, and as I've shared before, technology is amazing. Our cell phones keep us connected, and they do almost everything else. They can uh, do everything that, um, they, they can do more than what my computers have done in the past, just by a cell phone. They do everything that computers did back in the old days, 10 years ago, um, and they do a lot more. Today, I saw on the uh, news a couple weeks ago, a guy was uh, there showing the new technology, and he had this wristwatch looking apparatus, and in this wristwatch, it was a computer, it was his phone, it connected him to Facebook, Wi-Fi, uh, did all these different things, and uh, he, you, could check your, you can check your email from the watch, you can check your Facebook, you can get on any other social media, you can cruise the, uh, surf the web, and you can use it for a telephone. So it's got all these capabilities. There's little excuse for us not being able to communicate and get a hold of anyone these days. That is, unless you do what Vicki and I did, and that is purchase a cabin that's in an area where there's no communications power nearby. So we have to drive a mile and a half to get our email and uh, get any kind of call that comes in. Um, we have to drive this mile and a half until we get down to a little town called Skeels and, uh, and then we can, we can get back connected. What a hassle that is, driving a whole mile and a half. and It's an inconvenience. Years ago, you would expect to wait a day or two if, some, if you called someone, they'd get back to you. Now, if we can't reach somebody instantaneously, we're in a panic. Must be something wrong. I can't reach her on her cell phone. And in this instantaneous communication and connectability, it comes at a high price. Most of us are so busy that we have little time for that which is really important. And it's interesting because technology is supposed to have taken all those things away from us and makes our life easier. Technology doesn't do that, folks. Just the opposite. It makes you even more busy, more dependent. If you try, and, and unfortunately, people have become so much a part of the technology, or technology has become so, part of, uh, so much a part of them, I can't tell which is which, but um, the, we can't be separated from our uh, technology. Uh, my grandkids come over and there's no communication going on because they're too busy doing all this. All the time they're there. And I don't even know what they're doing, but they're doing something on these things. And, um, and, it, and it doesn't end there. If you drive down any street or highway, you'll see someone operating a 3,500 pound plus vehicle with one hand and one eye while they've got the other hand and the other eye on their technology. That's kind of scary to me. But this illustration isn't the exception. This is the rule. This is, this is where we're at today. And I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've been put on hold by someone who catches another line. That's aggravating to me. Or how many times I've been, uh, I've spent 
talking to someone face to face and, and their cell phone rings and they just have to take this call. So I stand there while they're having a conversation with someone on the other end and I'm out in the cold. Does that aggravate anyone else? <laughs> it's ironic that in an effort to become better connected and to be more in touch with the world around us, that we've lost the ability to be able to communicate on the most basic of levels, face to face. Most younger people today prefer that you communicate with them by texting. They don't want to talk to you. They don't want to see you. They want you to text to them. And it'd be so simple just to pick up the phone and punch their number in and say, I'm home. Instead, you've got to send them a text, which is a hassle for me because I just don't seem to ever hit the right buttons. So despite technology, we are busier today than ever before. And I believe that all this busyness is, I, I, I don't believe it, I believe it and I know it to be true. This busyness has impacted our relationship with God. Amen. We're too busy for Him. Most of us do not spend much, if any time, with God because we are so busy. Younger folks are especially impacted by this busy phenomenon. We get so burned out, we get so tired because we're, we're going from the moment we wake up until our last open eye event in the evening, whatever that might be, and we're just tired. We're, we're tired all day and we don't sleep very well at night because we're so tired. Our bodies, according to the Bible, have been fearfully, that is with respect, and wondrously, amazingly made. Psalm 139 verse 14. That is that we are created with care by God and we are unique among all nature. God made you with all your unique qualities. That's how God made you. Now, I was made in the image of God. I wasn't made in the image of an orangutan. You were made in the image of God and you weren't made in, in the image of an orangutan. We might act like monkeys sometimes, but we're not. We're made in God's image. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. And you're built to work and then to rest. That's how God designed you. We can't go for day after day after day without taking a rest. Because what happens is, once, in a, uh, once we reach a certain point, fatigue takes over and we can't stay awake. We fall asleep no matter how hard we try. If we go long enough without rest, our bodies begin to shut down. Also, our minds begin to shut down, and after a while, they begin to break down. Many years ago, I was out running, and it was a 90-plus degree day, and I was uh, out training to, uh, to get ready to run the marathon, and after, after several miles, I think I was at, at about the 20-mile mark, um, I was coming down Genesee Road, and there was a, a pickup truck parked on the side of the road facing me, and as I, as I uh, came down the road, the truck began to roll towards me. And, and I jumped out of the way, um, only to realize that the truck hadn't moved at all. My mind had played a trick on me, and, it, I, I, and of course that caused me to start questioning myself. Um, about a mile and a, and a half later, um, Vicki uh, fortunately happened to come looking for me, because I'd been gone about three hours, and she came looking for me, so I was able to ride the rest of my run home in the car. We all have times when we reach a point that we're pretty much ready to stop running and take a ride. Now, my illustration is one of the physical limits of our bodies, but there are other parts of our persons that are also impacted by fatigue. Our emotions are affected by our energy level. Um, we all know what happens when somebody's tired. Um, they become irritable, more irritable than normal. But did you know that your spiritual well-being also depends on you being well-rested? It does. Because we are made in the image of God, we are a trinity. We're body, soul, and spirit. If I'm physically tired, 
then I'll also tend to be tired in my soul, which controls my emotions and my physical behavior, and I'll also be tired spiritually, that is, in my heart or in my mind. So, with that in mind, let's consider our scripture for this morning, Matthew 11. Um, and and I, I'm going to go back and, and actually start reading at verse 20, because reading at 25, it, it kind of throws us into the middle of what uh, was going on with Jesus. Um, Jesus had condemned several cities in Israel that had given themselves over to sinful behaviors. Chorazin, uh, Capernaum, and Bethsidia particularly. Now these towns are towns that Jesus knew well. Jesus had performed many miracles in these three towns. He had done a lot of teaching in these towns. And he's, he's aggravated with these towns because they were busy, which is okay, but they were also sinful. They were doing things they ought not to have done. Let's go ahead and, and look at our scripture beginning in verse 20 of chapter 11, the book of Matthew. Then he began to upbraid or chastise the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Woe unto you, Chorazin! Woe unto you, Bethsidia! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have had repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, which are exalted into heaven, shall be brought down to hell, for if the mighty works which have been done in you would have been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them unto babies. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knows the Son but the Father. Neither knows any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son shall reveal him. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls." For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let's go to the Lord a moment, please. Heavenly Father, I pray today, Lord, that you'll help us to, to understand, Lord, that we need to take time for you. We need to set aside special times when we devote our, ourselves completely to you, where we don't think about our job, or we don't think about our kids, and we don't think about the bills, and we don't think about all those other things that seem to tug on us and pull on us constantly, but where we have a, a period of time where we just think about you, where we spend our moments relaxing spiritually, relaxing physically, just enjoying our time with you. Help us to understand the need we have for this, Lord. And you've told us that no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter how difficult, no matter how hard it seems to be, you will give us rest if we will take your yoke upon us. All this I say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In this passage, the Lord addresses these towns that were involved in, in sinful practices despite the fact that He had came or come and, and performed miracles there, that He had taught them in their streets. And now Jesus talks to His Father. And he thanks him that while the worldly wise people refused to turn away from their many sins, the common folk, the folks who did not have the scriptures, they did not have the education that provided them the ability to be able to read what the scriptures said, but they came with a humble heart like little children and they gladly received the things of God. All these centuries later, little has changed. People who should be spiritually wise, people who should be spiritually mature are instead sinful and corrupt. Jesus said in verse 27 that all things were delivered unto Him by God and no one can know Him as Christ, that is the Messiah, unless God has revealed it to them and no one can come to know the Father and have a relationship with Him unless they know the Son. Now the word know just simply means to have knowledge about something. How does this work? 
Jesus said, you can't know the Son unless you know God, and you can't know God unless you know the Son. Amen. See, the point Jesus is making here is that they are one and the same. You can't know one without knowing the other. It's impossible. You can't know Jesus without knowing God because Jesus and God are one. But folks that are wise in their own minds can't grasp this truth. It takes not worldly knowledge and worldly education. Instead, it takes spiritual wisdom, spiritual education to understand this basic truth. The knowledge of the world clashes with the knowledge of God. They are at enmity with one another, as Paul said in Romans 8-7, and James echoed in James 4-4. And, and the word enmity just means that they're at war. They're fighting constantly. So the things of this world are fighting against the things of God. If you've ever lifted weights, then you know that after you lift the weights for a while, even though the weight doesn't increase, it gets harder and harder to lift until it becomes too heavy for you to lift. That's because your muscles begin to tire. They begin to break down from the resistance of the weights and eventually, what do we do? We have to stop and rest. That's the way it works. Well, all this craziness in the world works the same way against your spirit. It's a constantly causing you to, to, to have to lift the weight of the sin or of the... Of the um, and, and not all... Let me say this, because not all things of the world are sinful. Most of them are. But some things are just stuff that we have to do. Like going to work. That's not sinful, generally speaking. It's just it's something that we need to do. We cause it to become sin when we allow it to take the place of God in our lives. So if your work is taking precedence over your relationship with the Lord, then your work is sin. You see how that works? But it's not sin in and of itself. It only becomes sin when we allow it to take the place of God in our lives. So we need spiritual rest. And where do we find this spiritual rest and refreshing that we all need? Verse 28, Jesus said, Come unto me. Now stop right here a moment. The first thing we must do to have a personal relationship with God and Christ is to come to Jesus. Come to Him. Understand that you have a spiritual need. We all have it. That need may be evidenced in your physical or in your emotions. Um, you may be here today and you may be addicted to something. You may be addicted to the, to the uh, usual suspects, drugs or alcohol, but you also may be addicted to other things. You may be addicted to work. Workaholics, right? There are people that are that way. There are many things that we can become addicted to, and addiction is anything that takes control of our lives, whatever it is. So, you may be here and, and you're, you may be struggling emotionally. You may have some emotional issues and you may just be emotionally just hanging on and you're ready to give up. These are signs that you need to come to Jesus. Again, verse 28. Come to me, all you that labor or struggle under your load. Whatever that load is that you're struggling with, Jesus wants you to bring it to Him. Why? We'll look at that in just a moment. All you that struggle and are heavy laden. Now the word laden, we don't use that uh, term very often, but what does it mean to be heavy laden? That word literally means overburden. So whatever that weight is, over and above what we're capable of handling, that's heavy laden. That's overburden. It's more than we should have in our lives. Jesus said, you that are overburdened, all you that are struggling with whatever it may be, physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever it is, whatever you're struggling with, Jesus said, come to me. Bring it to me. And when you do, Jesus said, I will give you rest. Whatever it is, I'll give you rest. And again, who is it that gives you rest? Jesus alone. Nothing else can give you rest. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. The word rest is interesting here also. It's the Greek word 
N-O-A-O. -O. And it means to refresh or to take it easy, to repose or recline. That's what it means. And it means also, another word that I found interesting, it means to be exempt. Now when you think about being exempt, what's that mean? It means you're not included with everybody else. In 1968, when I received my notice to go down for my physical, um, I wasn't exempt from anyone else. I had to go down and, and take my pre-induction physical, just like anyone else. And they ended up rejecting me, but I was exempt after they examined me. Not before. Exempt is that you're, you're different than everybody else. Jesus said, come unto me and I will make you exempt from the things of this world. You with me? Pretty simple stuff, but we need to do it in our lives. Jesus said, I'll make you exempt from your struggles. I'll make you exempt from your heavy burdens. I'll make you exempt from being heavy laden, from the overburden. The things of life are pushing us along at an unprecedented pace. Um, and, and what, unfortunately, what younger people don't know that many of us older people come to understand, and many of us come to understand it too late, is that you can't get that time back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So if you waste your life, and how do you waste your life? I'm talking about wasting your life with good things. Wasting your life by working more than what you should. Wasting your life by rushing around and not taking time for family, not taking time for God, not taking time for self. That's what you do. And you, you run around wasting that time, and then you get in your 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, and you look back and you scratch your head and say, what did I do with my time? What, what did I do? Instead of stopping and smelling the roses, as they say, I trampled them all down because I was in a hurry. I was going someplace. This life will push us along. And we need to be careful. We need to be careful that we don't get so busy. Technology is supposed to have helped us slow down. And instead, it sped us up to the point that we don't take time for the things that we should take time for. We're busy, busy, busy. And all that busyness is taking its toll on us physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Amen. Most of us aren't even aware that we're being bombarded by the things of this world because we're too busy. We're so busy that we don't have time to take a break. And yet, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to take time to, be, to take a break from all the things that are going on. Why is that true? Because right now, <clears throat> there, are, there are things going on in the spiritual realm that are, are frightening, to say the least. They're frightening. And they affect you and I. And, and unfortunately, Satan has given us so many things to do that we're not looking at those things that are important. We're not looking at, at what's, what's going on spiritually. I've shared with you many times. I shared with you last week in, in our message. I believe that, that most of us that are living today are going to see the Lord's return. I believe it's that close. And we've got to be ready. We can't get ready when we're racing around and, and not taking time spiritually to prepare ourselves. Because when He comes back, when that trumpet sounds, you know what's going to happen? Every clock is going to stop. Time ends when the trumpet sounds. Amen. Then, all the things that we should have done, could have done, would have done, will be left undone. They won't be done. <clears throat> At that moment, you can't say, hang on one minute, Lord, I'll be right with you. Time is up. You don't have that option anymore. Time ends. Time is a quality that was given to mankind for us to be able to schedule our lives in an orderly fashion. And we've sped up the clock ourselves. When that trumpet sounds, every clock will stop. Time will be no more. Jesus said in verse 29, take my yoke upon you. That literally means take my burden upon you. Which he says in verse 30 is easy and light. And what's that mean? That means that he's going to trade you 
your burden that is heavy and, and, and overburdening you, and He's going to give you in turn His burden, which is light and easy. Trade with me, Jesus says. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Jesus won't push Himself on us, folks. We need to come to Him and learn of Him. And when we do, verse 29 again, we will find rest for our souls. Um, many of you, and um, especially um, most, of, most older uh, folks here, will, um, will know who Harry Chapin was. Harry Chapin... Um, said a, he was talking about a song that he was getting ready to do and he was talking about a, a relationship that he had with his grandfather and his grandfather <coughs> uh, Harry Chapin said his grandfather um, was a painter and he, he never had anything he never never had any money he never had uh, anything because he had uh, chosen this profession um, over going out in the, in, uh, in the nine to five world and he told Harry one day, <clears throat> he said, Harry, there are two kinds of tired in this world. There's good tired and there's bad tired. And he said, good tired is when you've done something that you enjoy doing and you've spent the time and you're tired, but you're tired in a good way. Bad tired is that you're doing something that you really don't want to do and you don't like to do and you wish you didn't have to do and at the end of the day, you're wore out. That's bad tired. There's a, there's a difference between the two. And, and he went on to say, Harry, he said, I'm good tired. My life is nearing the end, but I'm good tired. I've done what I wanted to do, what I felt I needed to do, and I didn't, didn't sell out to that other uh, work. And folks, I, I think that, that illustrates what kind of relationship we need to have in this world. We need to spend our time with the Lord primarily our, uh, uh, primarily with him, and when we do that, then the rest of the stuff just falls into place like dominoes. Come unto me, all you who are weary. Verse 29, you will find rest for your souls because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Verse 30, are you busy today? Are you weary? Are you worn out? Jesus wants to give you rest. And and unfortunately, many of us as Christians, we read these passages of Scripture and, and we get in the back of our mind somewhere, well, this is for the unsaved. This is so somebody, And it's not for the unsaved. It's for you and I. It's for Christians. It's for people that belong to God. If you're, if you're so busy that you don't have time for Him, then you need to make time for Him. Amen. Jesus wants to give you rest. Let Him help you get your priorities in order. And once you get your priorities in order, you're going to find that you got more time. That's the way it works. Let Him help you today. Come to Him, learn of Him, and you shall find rest for your soul. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we conclude this time of the message, I pray, Lord, that You'll help each one of us to understand, Lord, that, that You are not the author of, of overburden. You are not the one that has placed too much work on our backs. You're not the one that has caused us to not be able to rest and relax and to be able to spend our time spiritually at, at ease, repose, and reclining. That's Satan's business. And, and I pray today, Lord, that you help each one of us to, to take the, the time to get our priorities right, to put you first, and then let everything else fall into its proper place. And when we do that, Lord, I believe with all my heart that you'll make our burdens easy and our yoke light. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we lead you in a song of invitation this morning? <coughs> It is well with my soul. If it's well with your soul today, great. Pray for those around you that need to, need to take that time to get the busyness pushed aside, to, to put technology aside and, and take Jesus on.
Our final song this morning, another wonderful song of the church. How great thou art. Wednesday night, those of you that can make it, we look forward to having, having you with us. Brother Gary, would you dismiss us today, please?